Every year, about 2,000 girls in Britain kick over the traces. They leave schools, office and factory jobs and sign up for work that will probably take them thousands of miles from home. To strange countries and different climates, where, when the day's work is over, instead of heavy shoes and top coats nearly all the year round, they get into shorts and sun tops and head for the beach. some of the girls who annually join the women's services, in this case, the Women's Royal Air Force. Girls who are trained for men's jobs on RAF stations at home and abroad. Any sort of job, except flying or navigating a plane. More than a quarter of a million WAFs served with the RAF during the Second World War. Today, with the Duchess of Gloucester as their Air Chief Commandant, they're a force of over 6,000 doing 80 specialised jobs. From towns and villages, like this one in North Wales, girls come in from all over the country to local recruiting offices. If they're accepted, they'll report for initial training near Grantham, Lincolnshire. They take an oath of allegiance to the Queen and are sworn into the RAF. Being ladies, they are given three weeks to change their minds and go home if they want to. But after that, they have only two honourable ways of leaving the service, by buying themselves out or by getting married. Every year, incidentally, some 800 WAFs get married. In uniform now, the new recruits go through a basic six-week course. RAF history and lecture rooms. And plenty of sports to keep them fit. The main reason for this basic training is to make them want to be part of and enjoy community life. But personal likes and dislikes, such as favourite hairdos, are not forgotten. With the six weeks over, the girls now move on to learn their particular jobs alongside RAF men. After training, they may be sent to a fighter station. As operation clerks in the control tower, they feed aircraft movements and other information to the flight control officer. Maintenance work on a 1500 miles an hour fighter includes paint spray. Girls who join the photographic unit service and fit special cameras into the gun sights of fighters. On a modern RAF station, replacements for every piece of equipment must be readily at hand, from the smallest radio component to an odd nut or bolt, or tires. Extra flying clothes in all sizes may be needed at any time. The lives of the flyers themselves are in the hands of the rafts of the safety equipment branch who look after thousands of parachutes. RAF dentists have RAF assistants and rafts also staff most of the service's hospitals. RAF policewomen train and work with the RAF police. As well as general police duties, they're often used on special investigation work. The Royal Air Force has a thousand guard dogs that have to be walked, fed and groomed every day by RAF kennel maids. All these dogs, incidentally, are gifts from the public. To every 18 RAFs in the service, there is one RAF officer, a girl who successfully passed through Octu in the Isle of Man. As RAF cadets, with white flashes on tunic lapels and hats, they take a three to six months course. 
Apart from specialized training, much of the course is concerned with human relations and living conditions, for a RAF officer is expected to add the homely touch to service life. For ceremonial evenings, flowers can be important. In contrast, the course also includes mountain expeditions with the RAF, where the going can be rough and nights are spent under canvas on the hillside. These girls may become secretarial officers, join the education or equipment branches, specialize in catering or technical subjects. But first, they'll be officers of the RAF, holding the Queen's Commission and responsible for the air women on their station. As the course draws to an end, these RAF officers will be posted to a different job every two or three years, to RAF stations at home and abroad, to the Air Ministry, or to the NATO headquarters near Paris, where they'll work with men and women from 15 different nations, like these women officers of overseas air forces. Dame Anne Stevens joined the RAFs by accident and rose to be head of it. Her successor, Air Commandant Jean Conan Doyle, daughter of the creator of Sherlock Holmes, joined as an airwoman. All service personnel and their families are flown to overseas postings nowadays by RAF Transport Command. And on their comets, there's a new job for RAFs, Air Quartermaster. Having safely and comfortably got her passengers halfway across the world, she'll probably have a few days free in Aden. Then she'll join another family flight back to England or further east. There are nearly 200 rafts based at Singapore, and what could be better for an afternoon stroll than the Tiger Balm Garden with its colour and strange statues? There are more than 100 rafts at Cyprus in the Mediterranean, where 26 years old senior radar technician Carol Nicholson from Yorkshire gets ready for the annual ladies' race at Nicosia. They're all British girls in the race, by the way, so competition is hot, and they really make the dust fly. On air stations, there's always plenty of opportunity for the mechanically-minded RAF, like Mary McGurk from South Shields, who's bitten with go-karting. She practices three afternoons a week and often leads the field. For those who prefer something less noisy, there's plenty of sailing. Yes, this is certainly a girl's life. And it all goes to show that in the world of today, there are few jobs in which women can't compete with the men. <laughs> 